Monster Hunter World is an excellent game, improved over its predecessors in almost every way, which has put it on the certain path to become Capcom's most successful game ever, beating out some prestigious titles. Despite that, it's by no means perfect. What game is? But rather than be unconstructively negative, I'm going to focus on the biggest improvements that could easily, or at least feasibly, be patched into the game, as, so far at least, the game's post-launch support has been excellent. Up to around 32 hours in, the game has a pretty steady difficulty curve, constantly introducing new, more challenging monsters, which never take more than a few good attempts to overcome and move on to the next. But then, at roughly the halfway point in the main story, you hit the wall. Swapping over from low rank to high rank, it's as if a developer at Capcom suddenly remembered to slam the button on his desk that turns on the difficulty and grinding. Monsters you've been facing since the start of the game are now much tougher, posing a real risk of killing you in one or two hits, as your low rank armour is now almost useless. For the next 10 hours you'll be working your way up through the same monsters you've already fought to unlock the next bit of new content, and the only newcomer to join the roster is so above your ability to take on at this point he's more of a nuisance, swooping in on every hunt to steal your targets and make you run for cover. Armour now takes more, rarer, parts to craft, so you'll have to repeat the same mission five times or more for a full set that's visually identical to your current ones, and even the new quests now require grinding, only unlocking when you max out your scout flies by examining special monster tracks which you'll only find two or three of per hunt. All these sudden layers of repetitive grinding are a huge turn off for players. I thought about canning the game, and I'm sure most other people did too. And even when you do start getting back into the new stuff with a fresh area towards the end of those 10 hours, you're greeted by monsters that are basically the same as ones you've already faced, just with a new lick of paint. The best way to flatten out this off-putting wall would be introducing new monsters during this dragging middle section of the game, which Capcom might even be doing depending on where they place the upcoming monsters they've already announced like Devil Joe but a much easier way is to reduce the amount of things the player has to grind out. Take out or reduce the need for tracking special footprints, and have the quests for the story monsters added automatically like they always have been up until now, and if the player tackles them before they're ready and gets their arse handed to them, include a line of dialogue along the lines of better gear up and come back later. This gives a glimpse of the end goal and something to work towards during the grindiest section of the game. And please make it so Basil Goose doesn't live in every location, he's much better as an occasional terror than a constant pest. World has done a lot to streamline the obtuse systems of Monster Hunter for newcomers, or at least explain them with pretty comprehensive tutorials, and I understand that they don't want to throw up impenetrable walls of system explanations like some of this year's other games, but there are still some mechanics that need to be better explained, or even just explained at all. If you're new to the series, did you know that sharpness doesn't just affect if your weapon is deflected, but also the amount of damage it does? A weapon with a good chunk of green sharpness could be better than a weapon with more raw damage, but only a sliver of green. Dark Souls, a series lauded for its lack of handholding and minimal writing, nonetheless has a help button in almost every menu that explains each term and attribute as you hover over them. It's a great feature that saves you from having to search up explanations on your phone while playing, and I think World would benefit from shamelessly stealing it. One of the most asked questions about World is what affinity is, and I got completely the wrong idea about it too at first, assuming it to represent an attack increase as you use and become familiar with the weapon. Imagine how much confusion would be stopped just by having a little tooltip that pops up and says, it's another word for your crit chance. Ingredient quests have always been a mixed bag in Monster Hunter, with the all too frequent ones that make you slowly backtrack holding a very fragile egg being my most hated part of previous games, and thankfully they've been improved for World, which now lets you run and climb freely without dropping the egg. One thing that hasn't been tackled is how these egg quests work with the new unlockable camps. You aren't shown where in the map eggs are located before taking the quest, and some are right at the furthest corner away from your starting camp, making the carry back close to impossible unless you find and restore a specific hidden campsite closer to your destination. Just to save frustration, I'd like to see these missions not trigger until you've unlocked the required campsite, or at least a warning pop up if you try to attempt them beforehand. The other type of ingredient delivery mission is far less frustrating, which is lucky because there's a lot of them. Normal procedure is to filter your map to whichever plant or small animal you need, then go and grab them. But I wish it was a bit clearer when the ingredient you're after is hidden in a searchable item. Just say, search conch shells for 10 abalone, rather than having me look all over the map expecting abalone to be lying on the floor like all the other items. New to World is the ability to choose whether you return to base or go back to your camp at the end of a quest. 
It's a great idea as staying out in the field cuts some minutes off the substantial loading times, but you have to pick it at the wrong time. If you're farming materials for a new armour or weapon upgrade, you'll want to stay out at camp until you get enough resources to go back to Estera and forge them, but the majority of these resources come from the post quest reward screen, after you've picked your destination. Just make the R3 button toggle location on that screen rather than when you're carving up your kill. Also, at the moment if you fail a quest you have to load out to your camp, re-accept the quest and load back into the location again. What's wrong with a retry button on the quest failed screen? I haven't played any multiplayer but the most common problem people have with that could also be solved by tweaking the return to base system. Other players appear in the gathering hub at the top of Astera where you can hang out with your friends and do all the normal sort of in between quests things you do in the town. But because of the difficulty in syncing the different states it goes through in the story, other players don't appear in the main part of town. This would be fine but when you enter the zone while playing multiplayer, the game still drops you off at the bottom of the trade yard, with another loading screen in between you and the gathering hub. This means very few people bother making the trip up to the shared area, and you don't see other players until you go back out on a hunt, losing that communal post quest feeling you got in previous games. This is especially baffling because it should be an easy tweak, place players straight back into the gathering hub if they're playing with other people. One of the most pointless annoyances in the game is when you run out at the start of a quest, go to the first plant you see, pick it up and, item pouch full, discard item? The item system has been greatly improved since 4U with things like monster calves, gathering tools and ore no longer taking up room in your inventory, but to clear all of the other things out of your pouch you have to go to an item box between missions and manually move all of your collected items into it, and if you forget, you get that wonderful message. Automatic time savers obviously aren't against the game's design philosophy, what with the handy auto crafting system, so why not save a few steps and reset your character's inventory to the last used item loadout at the end of the quest? Camera problems have been a complaint in pretty much every game since we moved to 3D, but it's particularly frustrating for this game because they came so close to nailing it, mainly by virtue of throwing a ton of customization at you. What other game has two whole pages of settings just for camera control? My suggestion would be a simple one compared to the overhaul that most people would propose, and that's a combined camera mode. At the moment there are two modes, focus, a mode that automatically follows the monster, and Target, the traditional monster hunter controls that focus on the monster with a press of L1. I'm not one of the series veterans that insist Target Cam is the only way to go. It was a good way of overcoming the limitations of handheld consoles, but as an insect glaive user the constant button mashing and jerking refocusing camera that I would need to keep the monster in view drives me mad. For the most part, the modern focus camera does me well, but it has two glaring faults. Too often if you move the camera manually or the monster jumps out of sight, the camera unfocuses itself and you have to lock back on with another press of R3, and sometimes the camera stays locked on but loses track of the monster. Unlike target mode, the only way to refocus on the monster if that happens is to double press R3, essentially resetting the lock on, which is annoying but works fine if you're going at your prey one on one, but if you have more than one monster in your lock on bar, Doing this cycles through each of them, so you have to take your eyes off the fight to scroll through whatever beasties happen to be hanging around in the area. In my ideal combined mode, the focus camera would stay pretty much the same, keeping the monster in sight automatically for the most part, but L1 would refocus on the enemy if needed, without the need to faff around with lock-ons and other monsters. Tapping the button does nothing at the moment anyway, so there's not really any drawback to giving us the option. As I mentioned earlier, high rank armour is a set almost visually identical to low rank armour, but with better skills and stats. However, for each set of high rank armour there are two further distinct types, alpha and beta. The main difference being that beta armour allows more customization for skills, so that will be the set you want by the end of the game. The problem is these two types of high rank armour are also visually different from each other and while most sets are similar enough it doesn't matter at all, the objectively better beta types seem to trend towards smaller, less bulky armour and does away with the really cool capes you can find on the alpha versions. There's not really any reason to tie visual differences to the amount of skill customization you prefer, and almost everyone will run into a point where they think, well this armour is better, but the other one looks so goddamn cool. So although it's unlikely because Capcom would have to rewire a pretty integral menu system, I'd like to see an update add the ability to pick whichever armour type you fancy, and then choose your skill preference afterwards. 3 level 1 decoration slots, or 3 element skill. Also, add more poogie outfits. And that's my thoughts on how Monster Hunter could be improved the most with the least effort. 
Leave a comment with your ideas, the more nitpicky the better, and thanks for watching. I'll have another Monster Hunter video at the end of the month, and then probably something on Iconoclasts. So if that sounds good, you know what to do!